Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made my um, rainbow. This is a rainbow for um, the window to show our support for uh, the NHS and our carers. So this particular rainbow I made um, using two rows of each color so it's quite a big one um, and I'm going to show you how to make this but I'm going to make it half the size and so how you if you wanted to make it this size you would just do two rows of each color as I have here um, alternatively you can do one row and just then repeat the colors but I didn't want to do that I just wanted to make a big one for my window so I did two rows of each color um, but I'm going to do this small one for a smaller window and plus it would be a shorter tutorial, which um, I'm sure you'll all appreciate. So um, how do we do it? Uh, so many people have been um, putting on Facebook and, and other places have, that they can't get their um, rainbow to have a nice straight edge. And I've tried many, many ways um, of working the increases to keep this lovely straight edge and doesn't seem to matter what I do it constantly wants to travel this way so it's not straight and it wants to make a circle so the only way I figured as an alternative to it is to actually make a circle and then halve it and secure it which does actually work quite well because it makes the colour more dense and vibrant so that when you've put it in the window it's it's more of a substantial kind of thing you know that you don't see the um the daylight through it quite so much which is a it's good it makes the color more vivid now i will say these colors are actually a lot more vivid than they look on camera but it is um once you you film something i find the colors don't always come out true to color so if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and you may be informed when there are new videos. I say may because we're uh, experiencing a little bit of um, hit and miss with that at the moment. So uh, just to let you know, this is in fact a nice bright purple. Um, purple is very difficult to photograph. It does tend to blue out a little bit. Um, the only thing I'm changing is the colour of this yellow. Now this one does look kind of washed out on here, but it is actually nice and bright. I just wasn't particularly, once I've done it, wasn't particularly keen on this yellow. So I'm going to change that. Um, so I'm going to get started with red. Um, I just tried to go with the old song that did the colours of the rainbow. And I know there are several different ones, but this is the one that I chose. Anyway, so I'm going to get some red. Um, yarn now all of these yarns are DK weight there are three weight in the UK um, so in the US sorry so a DK and a three weight um, every single one of them and most of them are just kind of scrap yarns where I've had left over from various projects but you can use any yarn just make sure that you use a corresponding crochet hook for it now because I wanted it to be kind of nice and drapey i have used a five millimeter crochet hook and this is a clover and more hook that i've been trialing recently so you'll also need a darning needle and a pair of scissors darning needle not so uh, not so many ends to sew in which is a brilliant thing for me and anyone else who hates sewing in ends uh, there are only a couple so that's that's good <laughs> that's what i like to hear um, and i'll explain why that is on the way so I always start this um, projects like this with a magic loop and you've probably seen my easy magic loop before now that uh, those of you have been with me for a little while and I just make a loop, insert my hook and bring the yarn through and then you've done it. That is the easiest way ever to make a magic loop. And if you want to make that a little smaller just to start with, that's great. So I'm going to chain two to get me to the right height for my stitch and we're now going to work inside this this loop that we've created and we're going to work over this elongated knot so i want to make in total 
12 stitches into this ring and these two chain count as my first so I'm going to make a UK treble crochet which in the US is a double crochet and we do that by yarning over putting our hook into the center yarning over and bringing up a loop so we have three on our hook yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two and I'll show you once more slowly and then I'll just get on so that's yarn over into the center yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two so that's a UK treble crochet or a US double and I want a total of 12 stitches in this um, in this ring total so I've now got three including my chain so I'm going to pause the video and I'll pick up again with you once I get to the end so I don't really want to count in front of you all because that puts you off of your counting so um, I'll, I'll just pause the video now and pick up with you again when I've got to my 12th so um, if you want to see how that's done again by all means just rewind the video Now I've completed my 12th and I've been working over that uh, loose knot section just as I said. I'm going to pull that close just a little bit. Um, I don't really want that to, um, to work its way out. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to show you what we do next. So that's the, uh, the, the tail in the centre. We'll get that out of the way so it's not confusing. Now these are our first two chain that we started with and we want to slip stitch into this top one so we just pop the hook in and I'm going to change color and I'm going to go for the yellow now so I'm just going to put that down for a second and I'm going to cut off and I'll leave a nice big tail just need to get rid of my red yarn out the way easier said than done it was quite a way away just move that so it doesn't tangle and I'm going to get my yellow which is here it's a shame you can't see the pretty yellow that this is but it does look a little pale on camera so I've popped my hook into my top chain and I'm going to hold this behind like that just hold on to my my tail and of my red and the tail of my yellow and I'm going to pull a loop through with my new colour. Now I'm going to turn over and I'm going to tie um, these two ends together. Now take care that you don't touch this one which is the one from the centre. It is just the one that you've just cut off that you want which is the one up here. So I'm going to just tie that off and it's don't you don't need to worry about any of these ties or any of these tails because they're not going to be visible they're going to be on the inside of our I'm very difficult to see with the camera in the way what I'm doing so they're going to be on the inside of our rainbow so we don't need to worry about them at all now you've got your your two tails that you've just created there and this is the one that's in the center of our ring so you just need to pull that and it closes it nicely now it might work its way open again um, but that don't worry about that you as you you will secure that at the end you can just sew it and secure it so now we're here and um, I want to start my increase round so I'm going to pop my hook back into that stitch that we've just come out of and I'm going to pull up a loop so I've got two on my hook now this is how when I've changed color I do my first one because otherwise you sometimes get like a little bit of see that there you see that little bit there it will kind of your first stitch will have a, a line on it otherwise so my this is how I'm going to do my first two chain so this is going to be classed as my first one just that I'm going through two loops instead and there's my second chain so that's classed as my first stitch 
so those would be my two chain it's just that you can as you can see now I'm going to do another stitch in that same place and we're going to do two stitches in every single stitch around so this one here is my second stitch and it just looks a little different when you've made the join so I'm going to do two in this one as well and now I'm going to do two in every single one all the way around now if you wanted to you could work over those tails um, I did on my my big one and I, I don't know why because you know as I said you can just hide them on the inside the, the, it doesn't really matter you're not you don't have to t sew them in really they're just going to be trapped there on the inside so that's as simple as that all the way around two stitches in every single one of these and uh, at the end you should have a total of 24 stitches so I'm going to pause the video and I will meet up with you when we get back to the start I've made it all the way around and that's my 24th stitch now of course if you were doing two colors like I did with my large rainbow then this would still be a red row and we'd be changing color now so I'm but obviously I'm going to change color every row at the moment so I'm just going to, into the top of my chain to do my slip stitch and I'm going to bring in my pink which is my next color I'll just find the end so I'm going to snip off my yellow and put that to one side with the red and now I'm going to bring through my pink colour just holding that as I did before at the back so I can uh, just carry on and slip stitch through and now I'm going to tie these normally speaking if I was making a nice flat circle I would do tidier ends but because this is going to be on the inside and you won't see them I might have made that a little tight because uh, it's on the inside and you won't see them there really isn't uh, a, a problem but if it was going to be just a circle for any other reason then I would make much tidier ends so we've now joined and I'm going to go into that same stitch and bring up my pink and do my two chain so that was my first one and there's my second now we're going to start doing our increases I'm going to zoom out just a little bit because otherwise you won't see it all I'm going to start doing my increases now and how to keep it if you look at mine you'll see it's got a nice curved edge it doesn't look hexagonal which sometimes these do and the reason for that is the way the increases are worked out if all of your increases are at the start then you will start to get corners so how we're going to do this every single round uh, one on this round was an, an increase so i'm going to do an increase on this one into the same stitch and then on my next round i won't increase on my first stitch i'll increase uh, on the next one so the increases for this round and not every stitch as before but every other one so in the next stitch we're going to do one and in the next stitch we're going to do an increase and in the next one just one so every single round that we're going to do now will increase by 12 stitches So we do an increase and then we do a single one. Can't see where I'm putting it. And that's what we're going to carry on all the way around. So your very last stitch as you started with an increase will be a single one. So carry on doing that all the way around. I'm going to pause the video and I'll catch up with you when we get to this point. Right, so I'm almost round. I've got to do my one on its own. 
and then I'm ready to join my next colour which is the green so I'm going to slip stitch as before into that top one cut my yarn and discard my pink and I'll get my green sorry about the clanking and just as before I'm going to hold on to that at the back and get my tail for this one and then just bring through my new colour and give them a little knot at the back of course if you want to join if you're used to joining yarn you want to join it any way you normally do then that is fine oh, I didn't do one there uh, that's fine you don't have to do exactly the same as me if you've got a preferred method of joining your colours then but I'm just as I say tying them off because there's no point in uh, being too precise with this so um, if it starts to curl up then don't worry it will flatten out um, for some reason even though you're increasing sometimes it does do that I think the difference in the thicknesses of yarns even if you get all the same brand you often get some colors that are just thinner than others so again I'm going to pop my yarn in and get my my loop I'm going to do one chain two chain now in our first stitch of our previous round we did an increase in our first stitch so I'm not going to do that this time and each round will increase by 12 so as we did one single stitch in between our increases in this round we're going to do two uh, in between these so my that's my first single one and this is my second and now I'm going to do an increase to so two in the same and then I'm going to do two on their own and now I'm going to do my increase and that's going to do we're going to do that all the way around simple as that and as we have started with our two on their own we will end with an increase so I'm just going to carry on with two in between my increases now oopsie so I'm going to pause the video now carry on all the way round and I'll catch up with you when I get back to the start so I've almost made it around and in my last stitch because we didn't start with the increase we now finish with one so we've got two in that last stitch and just as before we're going to slip stitch into our top chain and join our new colour just snip that off and this time it will be purple which doesn't look it but it is a nice bright vibrant purple I just don't need to mix it up with the green bear with me a second that's it so just as before <clears throat> I'm going to hold on to that one while I grab this one and bring through my new colour and sort them out normally speaking I would work over the tails and make myself less work but they're just going to be buried on the inside so it's even better even better so that now you see how we are progressing this first stitch now will be another increase so I'm going to insert as I did before and make my two chain and I'm going to do another in that same stitch so I've done my increase now in between it's curling up but it doesn't matter it will pull out in between our increases now we're going to have three so we had every stitch an increase one in between then we had two in between and now we've got three in between and don't forget this is a stitch here next to our it does look odd that one but it's is a stitch so I'm going to do three on their own and now I'm going to do an increase 
So each round, as I said before, increases by 12. So now I'm going to do my three. If I can get it in, it is. And now my increase. And that's going to do that all the way around. Three on their own and then an increase all the way back to the start. And as we started with an increase, we'll be finishing on um, just single stitches. So I'm going to pause the video now and I'll pick up with you again once I get back to the start. I've made it all the way round, but I thought it would be good to pause here and just show you how it's it's going and perfectly round I mean rather than hexagonal where you've got corners um, and that is purely because of the way we're doing our increases so my last three stitches were the ones on their own as I said they would be and I'm going to slip stitch into the top of my chain which is very difficult to see with um, this yarn color um, my lights not very good uh, here don't want to get the wrong stitch I think it's that one there and I'm going to bring in my new color so I'm just going to snip that one off and now it's this bright orange <clears throat> if I can find the end it's ah there it is so I'm to pull some yarn out and now I'm going to start with an increase again just bear with me a second. I just want to make sure by looking close up I was in the right spot. And I was. That's cool. So I'm going to hold on to that one. Bring in my new colour. And just bring through my new colour and secure those off. And before I do sew this, I might shorten some of these. Because I'm used to leaving a nice long tail to sew them in. But obviously we're not. Okay, unless you wanted to. I don't really know anyone who wants to sew in ends all the time. I certainly hate it. So now we're going to start again with our new cover. And as we started with an increase, we're not this time. So we are now going to do four in between our increases and it will start to curl forward um, but that's fine it, it will work itself out there's no worry about that so we're going to do four between our increases so that's one two three and four and then we'll do two in the next one and then four you see a pattern emerging. But every round you increase one uh, in between your increases. And that's how we carry on increasing. Okay, so I am going to finish this four. And then I'll pause the video. Otherwise it'll be quite boring for you to watch me going all the way to the end okay so I'm going to pause it now then and I'll catch up with you when we get back to the start I'm back at the start again and so I'm going to slip stitch <clears throat> into my first obviously I finished on an increase on that round because I started with not on an increase so this is my last colour. And I'm just going to join that. Same way as I have been doing. Now I know um, many people will say, oh, I couldn't risk all those ends poking their way through my work and would want to sew them all in. Well, that's fine if you want to, but I think as this is a window decoration, it's not going to be moved about very much. Like if it was a garment <clears throat> or a blanket, then ends can work their way out. But this is just going to sit in a window, so I don't believe it will. But And it should be quite easy just to poke them back through again. 
It's amazing when you do something as simple as tying a knot with a camera in the middle of you. It's not always easy. So now I'm on my last colour now. I'm on the blue. And obviously if you've gone two rounds, yours is twice the size of mine now. So I'm going to start with an increase because I finished with one. So I've got my two in there. And you've probably guessed it, in between our stitches now we're going to have five five single ones on their own I love this blue it's nice and bright and then an increase and then five on their own And we're just going to continue to do that all the way around. I think that was five. Let's check. One, two, th one, two, three, four, five. And now my increase. It's nice and simple. So I'm going to carry on now. Pause the video. And I'll carry on doing my fives with my uh, increases. And I will end with a five because we started with an increase. And I will pick up with you when I get back to the start. Okay, so I'm all the way back and I've done my my final five and I'm just going now to slip stitch into that top chain and I'm not going to change colour this time, obviously. So there we are, we've got our big circle and this is going to, as I say, going to be a really small one. So with my large one, what I'm going to do, uh, I've been making some hearts. That one is the only odd coloured one. And I've been making some medium sized ones. This one has to have its chain um, done. And I've been making some small ones and I'm just going to um, attach them and have them dangling. I'm also going to make some butterflies along here, but I've seen um, some of these, various people's um, rainbows where they've got like a row of clouds under here, which looks kind of cute. Um, but you can just do anything. And I was just going to have some hearts, maybe some pom-poms, like little tiny pom-poms, not huge ones. Hearts and pom-poms hanging off and um, some butterflies attached where the uh, where the things come down. So once you've done, uh, we haven't done yet obviously, but once you've done, all that remains is to attach and make a chain uh, for your hanger. Um but how we're going to join it is I'm going to not end off. I did with the first one because I wanted to make sure that all of this, because you can can see where you've got your join, but I wanted to make sure that that was on the back. But if we use it as a starting point, then it will be along the edge in any case. So I've got my hook. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this one is in the corner and I'm going to um, do a simple um, uh, double crochet in the UK which is a single crochet in the US all the way around and I'm going to go through both sets of stitches so I've got the two loops from that one and the two loops of the corresponding one the other side and I'm just going to bring up my yarn and do a double crochet and I'm going to do that in every single stitch around but actually, I don't think I've got in the corner that one let me try again I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I don't like it not to be um, there we go I'll start here I think it was the right one it just looked like it wasn't so there we are that's fine I'm going to carry on all the way around through two loops of both sides so I have them on my hook like this and I'm going to pull my yarn through and just do a double UK or a single US in every single stitch. That's cinching them together and giving us a little edge in to our work as well. So we've got a nice edge to um, attach our chain to. 
but just make sure that you don't miss any uh, stitches. It's easy when you hold it properly, but I'm kind of holding it in an awkward way because it's a tutorial. So I'm going to just do that all the way along and until I get to the other side. So in every single one, through two loops of each, as simple as that. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go all the way around and I'll pick up with you again when I get to this side. So I've almost made it all the way back. Pull out a bit more yarn. And carry on right to the end. Making sure I'm going through both loops nearly there. Make sure you go in the end one, otherwise it will, um, will look uneven. And I cinch that down so it's not quite so bold. And I'll leave a nice long tail because that one we do need to sew in. And I just usually do a chain, cinch it right down and then pull it through. So then I will bury that. So there we are, we've got a nice little small one. And you could even, if you wanted to, do um, kind of a, a, a display with maybe one there and another one there so that you kind of have, I don't know if I can show you that. You could have one each side. You could do all sorts of things. And as I said, you can attach to here and here, maybe do a chain to attach it to the window. If you didn't want it visible, you could use cotton like a, a cotton thread rather than cotton yarn, you know, a needle and cotton type cotton, and um, secure it that way so you wouldn't see the, wouldn't see the the, the hanger, um, and if you wanted to, you could just get one of those suction cups that go on the window, but I think that looks really cute, and no matter what I tried, I couldn't get it to have a nice straight edge unless I did it. Um, like a burrito so that's it thanks for watching so yeah all you got to do now is decorate it to your heart's content and make your hanger or attach it to your window in any way that you want but thanks for watching and um, just watch out for um, other videos I've got a video for this medium sized heart and I've got a video for this small one and um I'm going to do some butterflies and other things. I've just not really worked out all of the decorations that I'm going to do. So thank you for watching. Until next time, bye for now.